A WDRB investigation almost a year in the making comes down to this. Don't touch your microphone, sir. You can't kick us out of this meeting. This is a public meeting. Why are there so many firehouses that are empty? Do you understand English, gentlemen? English. I'm speaking English here. Valerie Chin's exclusive report tonight at 10. Questions about spending and concerns about empty firehouses. And when we asked the fire chief in charge about all of it, you might not believe what happened. Valerie Chin has been investigating the department for nearly a year in a story you'll see only on WDRB. Chief, this is a public meeting. You, you listen to me, dude. You cannot tell these people that they can't have a camera in here. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Don't touch our microphone, sir. <laughs> you can't kick us out of this meeting. This is a public meeting, so we have a right to be here. Southeast Bullet Fire Chief Julius Halffield tried to keep WDRB out of a public meeting of the Southeast Bullet Fire Protection District. I'm asking like a nice way. Buddy, call the cops and get him on up here, will you? Residents want answers, too. But when you've got an $800,000 surplus, and you still have your tax rate at the same deal, why don't you lower the tax rate? Hatfield then moved the board meeting upstairs. He serves as the chairman of this board and the vice president of the fire department board. Five other board members attended this meeting. Thank you. Um, Chief, you can't throw our microphone. No, you didn't drop it, you threw it. I'm putting another one down and it better not be thrown. Here is how it works. The Southeast Bullet Fire Protection District collects the taxes, about a million dollars a year, and gives that money to the nonprofit Southeast Bullet Fire Department for service. The Fire Protection District meetings are quick. This one lasted only 10 minutes. Why are there so many firehouses that are empty? Do you understand English, darling? Do you understand English? I just told you I don't have anything to say to you. I understand English. Okay, I don't appreciate you. how you're speaking to me. We contract the fire department to do our district work for us, all right? As long as they're providing service for us, we have no say what he does with his money. The Kentucky State Auditor's Office recently opened what it calls an examination of the fire protection district. In 2013, Auditor Adam Edelin said the department needs to make monthly reports to the district as to how the money is being spent. It's nothing to find. When you do everything right, you have nothing to worry about. Getting this building back in the hands of the taxpayers, finding a way to make sure the taxpayers get a good shake. That's what I was put on this board for. That's what these other board members were put on here for. But I don't really feel that their heart is in doing that. When we ask for IRS tax returns that the nonprofit is legally required to file for 2012 and 2013, they claim not to have them. They said the nonprofit is being audited. Tax returns we were able to obtain showed that the department has been accumulating surpluses. In 2011, its net assets swelled to $4.6 million. That year, it spent only more than $530,000, but received $1.4 million in tax money. Money. So where is all the extra money going? We tried to get answers at the second public meeting of the night, the fire department board meeting. It's none of your business. It's a private meeting. No, there are meetings that you have to hold that are public. That's not a public meeting. The district board is. This is not. So all everything that goes on with taxpayer money is all private meetings. Not taxpayers' money. Time it gets us. Christmas bonuses are given every year to paid firefighters. Records show last year Hatfield's wife Joanne received a year-end lump sum payment of fourteen thousand dollars for volunteering her secretarial and bookkeeping services. For the three command people that do not get run money. All year long, we, we give them a two or three hundred dollar bonus at Christmas. That is very true. Well, the same thing happened this year. I hope so, because I could use the money. And how much will go to your wife this year? Uh, I don't have any idea. It hadn't been decided yet. But as of the first year, we're, we intend, we've discussed putting her on the regular payroll and that paychecks pay her like everybody else. Under the Kentucky Constitution, bonuses for public employees are not allowed. Hatfield says a fire department has five full-time employees and more than 30 volunteers, but has six fire stations. Two are basically garages used for storage. The department says it has plans of selling those. Residents who live by Fire Station 3 on Deetsville Road say they can't get a lower insurance premium because it's not an active firehouse. Hatfield says they have equipment in them but are not staffed. We have four active firehouses. English. 
I'm speaking English here. Do you treat everyone like this, sir? Do what? Treat everyone like the way you're treating me. I'm not treating you in any way other than the way that anybody else would. Mutual aid is another issue. Shepherdsville Fire Chief Lane Troutman says his department with 15 full-time firefighters and two fire stations can easily help Southeast Bullet Fire and vice versa. But Hatfield says he will not assist. So you and me, we've lost $750,000 to Shepherdsville through our annexation. We can't afford to lose much more or we're going to be out of business. Instead, Troutman says Southeast Bullet uses Mount Washington and Zonton Fire Departments for mutual aid. Well, Mount Washington's probably from their main station in town is probably 12 to 13 miles away from where they would have to respond to. And Zonton's probably another five to six miles further than us. Even if something is very serious and they need your help and you're the closest department? No, ma'am. Can I make it any more clear? I asked you once tonight if you understand English. I'm speaking English. No, we do not do mutual aid with Shepherds. In April, the Southeast Bullet Fire Department was forced to pay back nearly $19,000 to the Kentucky Fire Commission for falsified training records. That's after Hatfield admitted he wasn't at training, which is tied to state aid and incentive pay. Despite all the records uncovered, some longtime board members of the Fire Protection District have come to Hatfield's defense. Julius has turned his fire department around when they were just carrying buckets and throwing on fires. The allegations about how much money Julius has got, to me, that's his business. The auditor's office says it's still at the beginning stages of its examination. No word on when that will be finished. At the Southeast Bullet Fire Department, Valerie Chin, WDRB News. Do you understand English, Sheldon? Do you understand English? Racist comments, questionable finances, now a major raid. WDRB's exclusive report on what police uncovered at the Southeast Bullet Fire Department tonight at 10. When WDRB raised questions about mismanagement within a local fire department, it brought new information that raises questions about racism. And a story you'll see only on WDRB News tonight. Valerie Chin uncovers some shocking new video of the Southeast Bullet Fire Chief. Well, I got a family of four from Cincinnati I got to do something with. <laughs> this is the comment that has Southeast Bullet Fire Department Chief Julius Hatfield feeling the heat this time. Video from a Bullet County Sheriff deputy's body camera shows Hatfield's department responding to a car accident on I-65 south of the Claremont exit in September. Hatfield, seen here in a yellow shirt, is offering to help Lauren Dickin, whose pickup truck was involved in a crash. You got a jack, ain't you? Show me where some things is at. I'll get my guy to start changing his car for you. Oh, that's all right. Have Dickon was taken to the hospital and released. Then the sheriff's department says firefighters picked him up and took him to the firehouse where his car was waiting for him. But it's a very different story for the other driver. Changi Mwangi, his wife and two children were in the other car, which was damaged in the crash. You don't have AAA? No AAA? Okay. Who's driving? Okay, I need your driver's license, proof of insurance, and the registration on the car. I have, I have, this is my proof of insurance. Okay. The Wongi, who is black, all? didn't get the same treatment from the Southeast Bullet Fire Department. The Sheriff's Department confirms this is Hatfield talking yep. to the deputy. Well, I got a family of four from Cincinnati I got to do something with. <laughs> Mwangi says he noticed Southeast Bullet Fire helped Dickon, but not Mwangi and his family. But he didn't think anything of it because his family wasn't injured and he didn't need assistance. He says he mostly dealt with the Bullet County Sheriff's Department, which was helpful. It's another startling remark from the chief who had a surprising reaction when WDRB asked questions about financial mismanagement and empty firehouses within the Southeast Bullet Fire Department. Why are there so many firehouses that are empty? Do you understand English, gentlemen? Do you understand English? Uh, English like I'll, this. I've asked you in a nice way. Buddy, call the cops and get them on up here, will you? Could I asked you once tonight if you understand English. I'm speaking English. The Kentucky State Auditor's Office is looking into the Fire Protection District's finances and expects to have a decision soon. I spoke to Hatfield on the phone about his language at the I-65 crash. He didn't want to go on camera, but said he doesn't remember the incident, and sometimes there is a slip of the tongue. He also apologized for the way he treated me last week. Valerie Chen, WDRB News.
Good evening and thanks for joining us everyone. I'm David Scott. And I'm Lindsay Allen. The fire chief embroiled in accusations of racism and troubled finances is really feeling the heat now. Only on WDRB News tonight, Valerie Chin reveals he's now under investigation and could soon be out of a job. Valerie. The Bullitt County Sheriff's Department here has been investigating the Southeast Bullitt Fire Department for the past six months. A police raid today got a lot of evidence and only WDRB was there. The Bullitt County Sheriff's Department launched simultaneous searches Tuesday afternoon on Southeast Bullitt Fire Department Chief Julius Hatfield's home and his firehouse. The Sheriff's Department says it is investigating Hatfield for insurance fraud and abuse of power. Based on our investigation, we believe that we have enough um, to not only prove an indictment, but also prove a case on official misconduct, insurance fraud, uh, abuse of public trust, uh, intimidating a witness in the legal process and bribing a witness. There are four Sheriff's Department cars here at the main firehouse. Investigators have a search warrant and they're inside looking for evidence. During the search, Hatfield quickly took off in his red truck and went straight to his house, where he was met with more Sheriff's deputies. I don't give you my consent. You know, I don't need your consent. But I don't uh, need your consent. I've got well, a search warrant signed by the judge. Call. Huh? Let me make a phone call. Well, you need to make it quick because if you don't open it for me, let me come on in, Julius. I'm going to force my way in there. He called his attorney and then investigators went through his house. On his property, there is a lot of expensive farm equipment, an RV, boat, golf cart, and several cars. The Sheriff's Department started hauling away boxes and bags of documents along with laptops and hard drives. Back at the firehouse, investigators are scouring through financial records and taking pictures of all the fire equipment. You can see a fire department RV and all the fire engines. For more than three hours, investigators collected numerous documents from the offices. Firefighters were also questioned one by one behind closed doors. Investigators copied documents and hauled away computers and folders. They bring in almost a million dollars a year in tax money, and last year they spent $375,000 is all that was spent. Um, at the same time, from what we're hearing from uh, people involved in the organization, uh, Mr. Hatfield was claiming that they couldn't afford certain protection equipment and stuff like that that's outdated for some of the firemen. But yet, um, it, it, we're seeing a, maybe a $600,000 difference of where that money is at. This is just the latest headache for Hatfield, who has come under fire for making racist remarks. Do you understand English, darling? Do you understand English? I just told you I don't have anything to say to you. <laughs> Southeast Bullet Fire Chief Julius Hatfield was referring to a black family who was supposed to help at a crash scene. Those words and how he treated us at a public meeting have caused national and international outrage. We don't need people like that representing a high profile position in our county. Our county is not racist. Now the Bullitt County Sheriff's Department says Hatfield is under investigation by its agency and the FBI. WDRB was there when these documents were seized. We also saw a number of firefighters and board members going to the department for interviews. Dan Thibodeau is one of three board members on the Southeast Bullitt Fire Protection District Board, appointed by Bullitt County Judge Executive Melanie Roberts and approved by fiscal court. He wants Hatfield to resign and plans to bring that up at the next meeting. Even some of Hatfield's own fire Firefighters tell WDRB they want him to go. Robert says her office has no legal authority to remove Hatfield, but she has talked to the three she appointed and told them to do the right thing. I really am hopeful that the board members will encourage the chief to resign. In recent months, residents started questioning how the department is spending their tax dollars. Southeast Bullet has six firehouses, but only five full-time employees. The end of the county where taxpayers are paying dearly for fire protection and the firehouses are being closed on them, the time for the runs is longer. They usually end up with a foundation left and that's about it. So we need to find a better way to run the fire department or demand a better way to run the fire department. The feedback that my office is getting is um, being uh, very upset and appalled with the extreme insensitivity that was shown. And we have responded, I have responded to each and every email. I personally feel the man should resign from the position he's in and let this get behind us before further trouble takes place. We don't need that. 
Investigators will look through all the documents and present that to a grand jury for criminal charges. We'll have another update at 10 live at the Bullock County Sheriff's Department. Valerie Chin, WDRB News. Why are there so many firehouses that are empty? Do you understand English, darling? A local fire chief feeling the heat steps down from the board, and WDRB is the first to report. From questions about spending to allegations of racism, we continue to investigate. The journalists of WDRB. A new twist today in the case of the fire chief under investigation for mismanagement and under fire for racist remarks. In the story you'll see only on WDRB, Valerie Chin reveals why Julius Hatfield could lose his job sooner rather than later. A Kentucky representative covered a law saying there's one person who has the authority to fire Hatfield, and we talked to her today. The um, state makes it very clear that we want the county judge executive to take charge in these kind of situations and be a leader. Representative Steve Riggs from Louisville is the chair of the House Standing Committee on Local Government, which has jurisdiction over fire districts. He points to this Kentucky law on why Southeast Bullet Fire Chief Julius Hatfield should be removed. It says an elected firefighter trustee may be removed from office by the county judge executive for inefficiency, neglect of duty, malfeasance, or conflict of interest. The removal would still have to be approved by fiscal court. It was important that, that the public be aware that the county judge executive does have authority in this situation. Not really sure what's causing the reticent behavior there. Hatfield is both the chairman of the Southeast Bullet Fire Protection District Board, as well as the vice chairman of the Fire Department Board, also called the Fire Corporation Board. County Judge Executive Melanie Roberts previously said her office had no legal authority to remove Hatfield. She tells WDRB she just learned she has more authority than she thought. I have not been advised on the details of the law, so now that uh, advice has been given, we shall act upon it. Just last week, Hatfield's house and main firehouse were raided by the Sheriff's Department. Investigators seized boxes of financial documents and computers. The Sheriff's Department is investigating Hatfield for insurance fraud, abuse of public trust, and intimidating and bribing a witness. The FBI is also investigating. Questions have surfaced about the fire department's finances and his ability to lead it after videos surfaced of him making a racist remark about a black family he was supposed to be helping. It would be up to a grand jury to indict Hatfield for criminal charges. I've encouraged my appointees to do the right thing. You asked me what the right thing is, and that is to see um, the chief resign. Representative Riggs has also asked the auditor's office to speed up his examination of the protection district. Valerie Chin, WDRB News. A meeting tonight could shed light on whether the Southeast Bullet Fire Chief can stay on the job. WDRB's Valerie Chen first broke the story about Julius Hatfield and his department after nearly a year-long investigation. Only on WDRB, Valerie talks with the county attorney about steps she took after so many community complaints. Since I have been in office for the last four years, I have said multiple times at many public meetings, the number one question that I have the public come in here and meet with me um, wanting answers on is Southeast. There was so much so public concern that the Bullock County that Attorney that Monica Robinson wrote a letter outlining all the issues to the Kentucky State Auditor's Office in July of 2013. The Auditor's Office says it's wrapping up its latest examination of the Southeast Fire Protection District, which collects the tax money and gives that to the fire department or fire corporation for service. We know the FBI is investigating, so did you turn over information to the FBI? I have talked to federal authorities early on. They were my first stop. Now a group of Bullitt County community leaders wants the immediate resignation or removal of Southeast Bullet Fire Chief Julius Hatfield, all signing this letter. This comes after Hatfield was caught on camera saying a racial slur when responding to a car crash involving a black family and the way he treated us at a public meeting. Do you understand English, darling? I hated what happened to you, and I hated the way Bullitt County looked at all of that. But the fact of the matter is, it actually shed light on this because I have been going around for four years incredibly concerned about the money here. The letter reads, there is no place for such arrogance and insensitivity. We are appalled by his attitude and we do not support him on any level. The letter is signed by many leaders, including mayors of several cities in Bullock County, the Tourist and Convention Commission, Economic Development Authority, Chamber of Commerce and Bullock County Judge Executive Melanie Roberts. It's really great to see a unified effort 
in showing that our county does care about how people are treated. Hatfield is the chairman of the Southeast Bullet Fire Protection District Board, as well as the vice chairman of the separate Fire Corporation Board. He has served as fire chief since 1990. Last week, the Bullet County Sheriff's Department seized documents from his house and main firehouse. The Sheriff's Department is investigating Hatfield for official misconduct, insurance fraud, abuse of power, and bribing and intimidating a witness. No, it's nothing to find. When you do everything right, you have nothing to worry about. Tonight's fiscal court meeting is at 6 p.m. at the Bullitt County Courthouse. The public will be allowed to voice their concerns about Hatfield. Organizers are expecting a large turnout. So, Valerie, what happens next? Well, the state law says that the Bullitt County Judge Executive can remove Hatfield as a firefighter trustee. That'll be discussed tonight. Is it going to happen tonight? Do we expect him to be removed or does the process just start now? The process could start tonight, then there would be a public hearing, then the fiscal court would have to approve it, so it would be the start of a long process. The first step of a long journey, Valerie, mm -hmm. you've been covering it extensively. We'll know you'll update us. Thank you. Yes. The Southeast Bullet Fire Chief has resigned from the Fire Protection District. WDRB's Valerie Chin explains there is a plan to replace him. Valerie? This is a letter from Chief Julius Hadfield. He apologizes and defends himself. In this letter, Southeast Bullet Fire Chief Julius Hatfield says he's resigning as a member of the Southeast Bullet Fire Protection District. His attorney says he still remains as chief and is still the vice chair of the Fire Corporation Board. On Tuesday, all Bullet County magistrates voted to remove Hatfield as a firefighter trustee at the Fire Protection District Board. His resignation from the board cancels a special meeting that was scheduled for December 16th. I think the whole board should be removed. Uh, there, there are too many people left behind that are still of the old fault and don't understand how that board should operate. Community pressure has been building for him to resign from office after several mayors and Bullock County leaders signed this letter saying they don't support him. This comes after Hatfield was caught on camera making a racist remark about a black family who was supposed to help after a traffic accident. Well, I got a family of four from Cincinnati I got to do something with. <laughs> Do you understand English, darling? That was how he treated us at a public meeting. Hatfield says in his letter, I want to formally apologize for the comments that I've made. I accept responsibility for those poor choices, and I sincerely regret that I've said or done anything that reflects badly on our community or that has hurt or offended anyone. The Sheriff's Department says it's investigating Hatfield for insurance fraud, official misconduct, abuse of public trust, and intimidating and bribing a witness. Hatfield says, I also want to assure everyone that the accusations of any criminal wrongdoing on my part are false. The Kentucky Attorney General's office says it received a request from Representative Steve Riggs to look into the Southeast Bullet Fire Department. The AG's office says it's reviewing that request. Meanwhile, there's now one spot open on the Southeast Bullet Fire Protection District Board, which is made up of seven people. Hatfield was the chairman. There wouldn't have to be a hearing, but the judge would still appoint a successor and it would have to be approved by fiscal court. Melanie Roberts, the county judge executive, says this is a first step in the healing process. She says there's an ongoing investigation that needs to play out first. So is there any word at this point on whether he will resign as fire chief? Well, he's getting some legal advice right now, but no word on if he'll resign as fire chief. All right, Valerie Chen, there seems to be new developments every day. Thank yes. you for keeping us updated. Lawsuits against the Southeast Bullet Fire Protection District and Department. In a story you'll see only on WDRB, Valerie Chin explains how many residents have filed suit and what they're asking for. The Southeast Bullet Fire Department is the subject of several lawsuits. Now some residents here say they want their money back. I was mad. I don't like paying money that I don't have to pay. Jamie Weck and his wife Bonnie live in the Heritage Hill neighborhood off Cedar Grove Road in Shepherdsville. Right. But for years, they were paying taxes to the Southeast Bullet Fire Protection District and the city of Shepherdsville for fire service. The Wecks, along with two other couples, filed this lawsuit against the Southeast Bullet Fire Department, which also went by the name of Pine Creek Forest Fire Protection District. Their attorney, Joe Watland, says his clients have 15 lawsuits like this. We found out that we was paying two fire taxes and or was paying a city tax and a fire tax and for the same thing and it just wasn't right. Donna Sharp Incorporated, known for its quilt sold across the nation, has filed suit too. This company and other residents say they were double billed from 2008 to 2012. The lawsuits state that Southeast Bullet Fire collected property taxes from the plaintiffs without any authority in law. When we found out that in five years time we had paid 
more than $30,000 in excess taxes. It, it was quite a shock. This litigation involves um, property that is in disputed areas. And so it, really what it comes down to is uh, what was inside the taxing district for the uh, fire district and what was outside and, and when, and that's what the court is going to decide. At the end of 2011, the Southeast Bullet Fire Protection District in the city of Shepherdsville reached an agreement to settle the 10-year dispute over territory. Residents were no longer paying both taxes. And certainly we feel like the position of uh, the district in, in taxing these residents is supported and, and was supported. Um, and we don't feel like um, the law uh, supports a, a refund to them. In 2013, Southeast Bullet filed a new legal challenge to the agreement that was dismissed by a Bullet County judge. But Southeast Bullet Fire continued to fight and appealed the judge's dismissal to the Kentucky Court of Appeals. The last few years, survival has been difficult. So uh, it, it would have been very helpful. We've had to, for example, cut employees to the bone. Julius Hatfield has been under fire for making a racist comment and for the way he treated us at a public so meeting. Several agencies are investigating the department and Hatfield. He has resigned as chairman of the Southeast Bullet Fire Protection District Board that collects tax money and gives it to the Fire Corporation Board for service. Despite Bullet County leaders calling for his resignation as chief, he remains on the job. Residents are hoping more people will join in on the lawsuits, saying they too deserve to get their tax money back. In Bullitt County, Valerie Chen, WDRB News. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Lindsay Allen. And I'm David Scott. Under fire for making racist comments and alleged mismanagement, the Southeast Bullet Fire Chief takes a paid leave of absence. In a story you'll see only on WDRV, Valerie Chin has a reaction on the Chief's move and the other big expenses the board approved. This is a letter from the Southeast Bullet Fire Chief asking for a paid leave of absence, and board members approved his request. <laughs> Do you understand English, darling? After these comments and calls for his resignation, Southeast Bullet Fire Chief Julius Halffield issued this letter and asked for a paid leave of absence starting January 1st. This fire corporation board that he's the vice chair of approved his request. All in favor? Why not a leave of absence with no pay? Okay, if he were found guilty of something or if maybe if he were even charged with something. Maybe we could have thought different, but the, you know, in, in our eyes, he hasn't been formally charged with anything. In the letter, Hatfield said, I feel like my continued presence as acting chief is no longer in the best interest of the department. It has become a distraction from the important work we do. He says after the investigations are over, I fully expect to be vindicated and would resume my duties as chief without the cloud of suspicion that I am currently under. When you do everything right, you have nothing to worry about. I don't believe it's his fault that he has to take this leave of absence. Whose fault is it then? I believe it's society's fault and, our, and the, the social media. Uh, he's been tried in the court of Facebook and you know gossip columns and, and everything else. At the Fire Corporation meeting, board members also approved officially hiring Jeff Freeman as a fire department attorney and hiring Thomas Clay as the attorney for Hatfield and members of the fire department in any possible criminal case. The board also approved hiring its own investigator for Hatfield and the department. It was a good move for him to uh, step away from the department is, is uh, what advice I gave him. Christmas bonuses were not given this year to firefighters like in years past. Records show last year Hatfield's wife Joanne also received a year and lump sum payment of $14,000 for volunteering her secretarial and bookkeeping services. Now Joanne has been hired as an employee. Board members say her salary will be $1,200 a month, which is $14,400 a year, and she will report to this board. The auditor made a recommendation that we put her on a regular salary. And so we have followed the, our auditor's recommendation. The board also approved $155,000 worth of new turnout gear and air packs for the department. Eric Butler, the assistant chief, who is also on the fire corporation board, will be the acting chief while Hatfield is on leave. The sheriff's department says it's investigating Hatfield for insurance fraud and other charges. Hatfield had already resigned from the Southeast Bullet Fire Protection District Board that collects the taxes, about $1 million a year. The money is turned over to the 
the Southeast Bullet Fire Department, Inc. or Fire Corporation for fire service. As the department spends far less than it takes in, the public asks, where is the rest of the money? I know where our money is. Our money's in the People's Bank of Mount Washington. How well do you know the financials that you're approving on this board? Well, I mean, I, I, I've been with this fire department for 24 years, and before that I was a firefighter in 12, for 12 years in Indiana. So uh, it's, I'm not new to the fire service. I understand everything we're doing here. On the agenda, board members say the chief will still come to the station occasionally and will be available for advice or counseling. At the Southeast Bullet Fire Department, Valerie Chen, WDRB News. The Southeast Bullet Fire Chief is under investigation, accused of insurance fraud. Questions surround how much the department charged for hazmat and car crash cleanup costs. In a story you will only see on WDRB, Valerie Chen sits down with the company who bills for Southeast Bullet and has its side of the story. We've been notified by the uh, Bullet County Sheriff's Department that there was an investigation and they requested all documents uh, in our file which we have given them copies of everything. And there was a, uh, a person with the FBI that accompanied them. When Southeast Bullet Fire responds to a crash scene and there is a cleanup, those costs are often paid for by insurance and trucking companies. Whatever is not covered can be billed to the driver. WDRB obtained documents that show some costs are small. Others are over $3,800 or as much as $9,400. Dave Jett is a cost recovery program manager for Immediate Response Spill Technologies. This Louisville company is a billing agent for Southeast Bullet Fire and other local fire departments. We really don't have a specific check and balance. Uh, we assume that our partners are accurate in what they give us. Periodically, we have questions either from an insurer or from a responsible party involved. The Southeast Bullet Fire Chief Julius Hatfield is on paid leave under investigation for alleged insurance fraud and other charges. Investigators are specifically looking into whether the fire department built insurance companies by inflating cleanup costs for car accidents that firefighters responded to. Jet says Southeast Bullet lets them know the number of firefighters, time spent, and equipment and materials used for the incidents. We're not involved in any fraud activity. Uh, we don't encourage anything to be done that's not truthful, and in fact, just the opposite. We want to make sure that we're fair and uh, we disclose everything that we can about what we do. Jet says rates for equipment and personnel are charged in 15-minute increments and says its rates are lower than other companies nationwide. I think firefighters are $50 an hour. Uh, and the command officer, I believe, is $90. According to its contract with Southeast Bullet, it adds 10% to the invoices for administrative costs and is compensated for materials used, like this product water. that cleans up diesel spills in water. Another product is used to clean up fluid spills at crash sites on asphalt. This statement shows the cleanups that Southeast Bullet was reimbursed for. In 2013, for half a year after fees, the fire department was paid more than $14,000 by insurance and trucking companies. This year, more than $27,000. Jet says drivers who are taxpayers in the district don't have to pay time and equipment costs, only material costs. They've had 25 incidents this year, which to me actually seems low. Uh, if you consider the fact that they're on the interstate and there's an awful lot of work on I-65 down by that particular exit where they're located. Valerie Chin, WDRB News.